Hey everyone, so in this video we are going to take a look at the free to use 3D modeling application Rocket 3F, which is available from the Rocket 3F website. So first a couple quick observations about the UI itself and then we'll get right into modeling. So you probably notice that the top and the bottom panels are switched. The reason for that is this panel has a bunch of file and editing tools that you typically associate with the upper left corner of an application. New, open, save, export, that kind of thing. So I put this panel up here just some because that's where you're more, more used to those tools being. Anyways, if you wish to rearrange, you just left click and hold the bar of the of the panel, left click and hold, okay? And if you want, if you hold this and move it up, you see that arrow appear, you would just drop it there, not going to, we'll just put it back where it came from. So if you wanna set yours up the same way, you're certainly free to, or you can set it up however you want, and these side ones move as well. So the second thing I want to mention about the UI is the viewport. You don't actually need to use this button. So this is how you rotate and zoom and pan. You can accomplish the same thing. Rather than holding that button, you can just hold the Alt key. So I'm holding the Alt key. I left click and you can see the mouse pointer changes. And now I move the mouse and that rotates. Okay. Alt key, right click. You can see it changes, zooms in and out. Alt press down on the scroll wheel, and now it pans. Okay, so let's do a little bit of actual modeling. So in the lower left corner here, you'll notice that there are some primitives. One of my pet peeves with this, just like a lot of other applications, it doesn't come with as many as it should. There's some really low hanging fruit that it did not include, like why is there not a pyramid? Why is there not a tetrahedron? Why is there not a cone? So there's a whole bunch they could have included, but that's what we've got. Hopefully they'll continue to add more over time. Now, if we click on say cylinder, we get this window that gives you a few parameters and this is how you create the shape. So it gives you like the radius, the length, how many slices. So slices, this refers to polygons. So how many polygons are making up any one surface of this, okay? Or any really, in this case, one stack of the object, which we'll see in just a second. So how many stacks do you want it to be? Does it have caps? And then the facings here. So this is the orientation. So if I click X and create, you can see it's oriented like this. If I click on Y, it's now vertical. And Z, it's along this one. So are you trying to make a pipe? Are you trying to make a tunnel? Are you trying to make uh, a chimney or something like that? So orientation really helps. So we'll just do that for now. We'll do X. Now see these individual spaces. Let's zoom in a bit. These, it's easier to select in a few seconds. Um, th these are the slices, okay? So the more slices you add, the greater the fidelity. This would, this would be smoother. It also gives you more control points because every one of these edges, every one of these polygons, you can move, you can manipulate. So it gives you greater control, makes it smoother. Each one of these can be independently colored or have a texture. So it gives you much, much more control, also more memory intensive. So let's go ahead and click done. So like I said, you can more clearly see the individual polygons. You might hear me say facings. I've always believed them to be the same thing. Like um, if we click on polygon, you can actually highlight them. OK, so each one of them you can manipulate. So uh, don't think I mentioned at the beginning of this video, but if you were to compare this to 3D Builder, which is a 3D model and application, it's free to use. It's by Microsoft. I really like it, but it makes things almost too simple. It gives you a selection of tools that basically amount to carving. It lets you carve and chisel away at a shape, whereas Blender and Rocket, 3, uh, Rocket 3F allows you to actually select individual vertices, uh, a vertex. Uh, it lets you select an edge, a polygon, and manipulate those different selections. So let's take a look at how that works. So if we click on vertex, we can click on a vertex. There is now three axes, and you can manipulate those in various ways. 
So when you are in a, a selection mode, you can see how you've got this color coordinated set of tools associated with that. So nobody we can cover all those in one video. This is just meant to be the basics. Like if you click on edge, different color, polygon, these are blue, object, these are green, and all of them actually have these brushes. So these ignore whatever is selected and just has an effect on the scene as a whole, or at very least in this case, this object, since it's the only thing in the scene. Okay, so in addition to these tools, you can also move, scale, and rotate. So say we click on that vertex, and then we click on move, and like I said, we have the three axes. If we click on that red one, we can just move that up. Control Z is one of your best friends. Control Z is undo, so that's a typical Windows soft key. Control Z, undo. Control Y, redo. So redo and undo. Now, you can select multiple vertexes. So if you, with the tool selected, okay, rather than just clicking, you click and hold, and now you can select a whole bunch. And again, you can do things such as move, such as scale, rotate. So let's, let's do move. We'll bring this out. Control Z. Now, you may think that Extrude does the same thing when you look at it, but in fact, Extrude will do something. Sometimes the effect will be similar, but it'll actually modify the uh, fidelity. And let's take a look using Vertex. So let's see, Alt, Left, to Rotate. What we can do, we're going to grab just that Vertex there. Okay. So let's rotate around. We're going to have move selected and we're going to grab the green axis. If I could. Oh, sorry, move unclicked. It can be a little fiddly. So you can just pull that out. So that looks, well, it does make a point, literally. But watch what happens if we do extrude. So. Control Z to undo, and now we select the extrude tool, and we'll do the same thing. It pulls it out, but it now creates this whole new ring of vertexes. So just keep in mind what you're trying to do. Are you trying to just manipulate what you have? That would be move. But if you use an extrude, you're actually creating new points. You're creating new facings. These facings have now been split because you have these and these. Let's rotate around. Okay. And like I said, I'm not going to go through all these tools. What I'd rather do is in a future video, I would rather have a project where you can see the synergies between using these tools with each other. So control Z to undo. So edge, you can grab a whole bunch of edges. And again, you can move. You can extrude. And let's now, you can rotate. Okay, so that's vertex, that's edge, now polygon. So for this, you can, as the name suggests, grab multiple of the polygons or facings, and then you could just like move these out. can extrude can then rotate Let's choose pull whoops Polygon, pull, there you go. 
So again, some of these functions, you look at them, it's like, why would I want to do that? That's why you really need to see it in a project. You really need to see why you'd want to combine these abilities. And then let's look at some of the brushes. So let's Alt, hold down, scroll wheel. Now, like for instance, this brush, you can see that there's this big circle showing the affected area. So that's move, pull, This one can work good on a flat surface. Like if you're trying to make it bow or bend, it's not so great with the curved surface. But if this was like a block, you'd really see how that would work. Flatten does just that. Inflate. Now the thing about some of these tools like this one, I pass over and over and over and you can see it keeps inflating. So it's not just one and done. So something like this will keep modifying. And pinch. Unsurprisingly, it pinches. OK, so let's look at the materials. And then that'll be about it for this video. So in addition to these panels that you have here, we also have materials. So we've got some colors here. What happens down here? you'll see any material used for this object. So these are the defaults. This is the one that's currently being used. So if we take, let's get rid of that tool. We take red and just drop it. It colors the whole thing. If we select that, and say so we choose orange. So I use the polygon selector now I change just that one facing, that one polygon. So like I said, if you have more and more polygons, you have more minute control, okay? And then I could say select those and then use an entirely different color. Like I said, the colors you're using are shown up down here. Now you can create a custom color. You can double click here and see what says change that would actually load a an image, a 2D image, so like a PNG. So it would open up File Explorer. You choose a PNG and it selects it. Reload, I presume, is if you've changed the image and you need to update it. Remove, you're removing it. And if you choose flat, that will give it more of a, a 2D and it won't be lit like, like a typical computer uh, shading. And then a few things such as are you adding a gray to the color? Do you want it to be brighter? that kind of thing. And again, this is, if you know what you're doing, great. Otherwise, it's kind of trial and error to get the effect that you want. So you can create custom colors just like that, as well as custom materials. And speaking of which, we do have this. I'm really not going to go into in-depth, particularly when it comes to using textures in this video, because it gets very complicated and there's a lot of things that you have to do to make it look right. So that would really be um, a, uh, a lesson in its own. But so far what I've seen is that unlike 3D Builder, which seems to have some issues with exporting, when you export, this does seem to import correctly into Unity. So that's the engine that I use for, for game designing. So uh, that's good news there. But yeah, you can just take one of these, you drag it and you can see it's reflective. See Alt Z. There we go. And as you can see, once the colors were removed from here, they're removed from here. So this is updating in real time as to what was added there. And the final thing that I want to mention in this video. So we looked at the fact that you could move a vertex, you could move or modify a facing. You could actually delete these as well. So for instance, let's go back to the vertex tool and we'll click on that. And then if I hit the delete key, I've deleted it. If we alt and look around, 
see it's been deleted. Now, if we undo that, we can delete an edge. So if we select, say, a couple edges and delete, you can now see that, well, it's hard to, because of the coloring, but here you have multiple polygons. So you got one, two, three. Here you only have one. Not saying that you'd necessarily want to do that. And then uh, as far as polygons, you can certainly say you changed your mind. You don't want the edge, the end cap, delete. So all I did was select with the polygon and hit the delete key. And let's see, alt left. Maybe you wanted a can, so you want there to be a bottom but not a top. Or maybe you want to delete that too. Or maybe you just want to delete the center. Again, I'm just left click holding. So you don't let go until you've selected everything. So a little bit like a lasso, but not quite because a lasso actually has an outline. This is just looking to see where the mouse is clicking and the delete key. And there you go. So now you have that there. So maybe you're making, I don't know, like a kaleidoscope that can be looked in or something like that or a telescope. So I think that's about it. I think that's about all I wanted to cover in this tutorial. There's so much here. Again, 3D modeling applications tend to be complicated. This one leans towards Blender as far as difficulty. But like I said, I do think that it is easier. I think they give you really clear uh, buttons that indicate what's selected and what's being done, which I don't think is necessarily the case with Blender, but I also haven't used it in quite some time. So if you guys want to see some full-on projects that use this, let me know. Rem please remember, I'm not an artist. I just let you know about these in case you want to use them for your projects, but I certainly would be uh, willing to do some common models for things that might be useful for your applications. That way you can kind of see how these tools work together because a lot of these tools, the, what I, the way that I showed you, you'd probably be like, why would I want to do that? Well, by itself, you wouldn't. It's the right tool for the right job and you'll know what it is when you come up to that moment. It's like, oh yeah, I need to rotate this or I need to extrude that or I need to, you know, whatever. So anyways, uh, just leave a comment if there's something you'd like to see and please enjoy the rest of your day.